I have never been one that likes to go after a fish that I need four full tackle bags in order to be able to catch fish. I'm, I'm more of a just two, two boxes like today, got some hard baits, got some soft baits. And that's basically what I like, what I like doing. And the same can be said about my fishing poles. I like to carry a couple. That's all I need. Just two poles, hard bait, soft bait. Pretty simple. I'm basically a minimalist. With all that said, as you know, I like simple. And today I'm after a species of fish that sometimes can be really simple to catch and, and a lot of fun. It is the end of March, it's cold. I am so sick of cold, I swear. If, if, if I complain about the heat this summer, I want y'all to remind me at, uh, that how much I really hated the cold more. But uh, down here in the southern part of Missouri on the, I don't know if it, if, if we're on the upper end of Bull Shoals or the lower end. Is the upper end where the dam is or is the lower end where the dam is? But anyway, coming off the, a, a creek off of the White River and uh, these fish are moving in here to spawn. All right, right here is this creek going up right here. And I'm right here, I'm kind of in the channel. So what I'm looking for, or what I'm gonna be trying to do is stay close to the channel, but I'm gonna cast on either side. Because it's not gonna be very deep in here. Right in there you see it's 14 foot. But uh, we're gonna start right here and I'm gonna make a few fan casts and uh, see what we can locate. Show you what I'm after today. That's what we're looking at right here. I bet it wasn't a second cast. Second cast. Get him tugging. And if we didn't bring no net. No net. And I'm gonna show you here in a minute. He got my ACC all bent double. Now there you go, right there. No net today. Look at there. Now boys, I'm gonna tell you. This is what I'm after, right here. And one of my most fun species to catch too. Right chill. Right there. Now how about that? Huh? Jerk bait, big white bass, late March. Start to come up here. I mean, that's a good, that's a hammer right there to start out with, right there. That's what we're after. I want it simple. I want it easy. <laughs> and my, my day's gonna be good. So let's catch a few more just like it. There you go. Now, I'm gonna have a feeling that uh, I got three or four boats here behind me. So, <laughs> if I catch another fish, I got a feeling we're gonna have company. So I'll probably have to be moving a lot. That's the one thing we don't, we're not using live scope or anything. We just got the one Garmin unit on there. It kind of gives me my depth. Where my uh, channel is in this creek right here. And that's all I've got to go on. So hopefully get into a mess and I don't get overloaded with boats here. Oh, I'll tell you what, now you talk about a little bit my any reverses on okay 
Now there's a little male right there. We caught the female a while ago, and now we got the male. So we know what they're doing. I'm going to tell you what, these hooks are the sharpest hooks. I'll tell you what. I can't even get my fingers off there. It's, there's your male right there. Yeah, you see the difference how small he is versus how big that female was. So there you go. It's about that time. I don't see him milking, so it's not quite ready. But uh, anyway, there you go, Mr. Male. All right, I'm going to change over to a, to another bait right here. I have no clue what this is. 110 Junior plus one. 110 Junior plus one. I'm assuming this is a mega bass. So, anyway, I'm going to change base, but what I'm going to do, what I like to do, is have a loop in my line here on there, a loop knot. Can't get my fingers to work, so the easiest way to do that, for me, is I just tie a simple little loop right there, just, just that, just flip a little loop, and then I leave about three, four inches of tag line, and that'll come in handy here in a minute, and I'll show you get this thing unhooked from my pants. I think all you guys know that. These things are sticky. Just run it through the through the eye here. And then from here, what I do, you see my loop right here. I go beyond the loop, beyond the loop on the main part of the line. And then I just do four loop four uh, passes over the over the line just like that see what I got four passes then I go to the loop and run my line through the loop and then cinch it down you can use your you can use your fingernails and stuff like again I'm stuck all on my this is not a very good tip here but Cinch it down good because I don't want this loop to be beyond the lip of my bait. So you can just kind of slide it down with your with your fingernails. And then I've got my loop right here. Then I just cut off my cut off my tag line. This is a long tip out here in the boat trying to do this. There you go. That's the kind of that's what I like to like to throw right there that way this keeps this bait natural and if I pause it it's not tied to the end of the line or whatever and so it works works pretty natural so let's see if it works now that that tips out of the way right there and like I said I'm not too sure that that would, was a good tip or not There he is. He short rode me. So well, that tells me something. Maybe they're not. He either come from the deep or look at that. Now that's another male. Hell no, it ain't either. He got just a little got just a little bit bigger once I gotta hit that stop shaking button right here. You gotta grab them right there, right there, right there behind the gill plate. If not, they will spank you. And something else that uh, I have never before this year or last year ever used gloves. And one of the reasons that I started using gloves are these fish right here. And these Gorilla Grips have been wonderful because I have been cut more often than not just on the gill plates here because they've got them sharp. But there you go, we switched baits. That seemed to have worked. But a nice little female right here. Let her go and we'll see if we can catch another. 
You know, one of the neat things about white bass that I really like is, is for one, it, it, this time of year, when they start moving up into the creeks and the rivers, you know, they're really not that hard to find. And a lot of, most of the times they're not that hard to catch. It's fun to take kids out and, and your mom and dad or whatever and, and catch them. And uh, they're usually the first fish that'll come up and start spawning. So usually about this time, everywhere, late March into April, whatever, that's prime time for the white bass. Use them on soft plastic, hard plastic, little Bama rigs or whatever. Really easy to catch and a lot of fun, ferocious little fighters. And that's why I love this time of year. It kind of gets you away from the cold in the winter, gets you into spring, gets you into the fishing mood. I don't know why my reel is flipping over. Oh, he cut that off right there, didn't he? See him in there? Another little fat thing. Look at that. If that ain't a fat little turd, GoPro, stop recording. These things are so much fun. So much fun. You know, this time of year, it kind of gets you out of the house, cabin fever, cold, everybody's sick of winter. And these are always the first fish, you know, that start coming up. Now look at that. I mean, that's a chunk. Catch them on these right here. Look at that hook. Wes gave me a faulty, faulty hook, but hey, nonetheless, it still, it still works. But we're on a few right here. These are fun little old fish. Now you hold them right here. You look at that, now you mash them right there on that, between them gill plates right there and hold them. That's what we call the stop shaking button. And that'll keep them from getting up there and getting all crazy and wanting to get you. All right, we'll let this one go. Okay, buddy. Thank you for the fun. The rod goes over Wes's head. Oop, back in. Now, come on. How much fun is this? You know you want to come do it. Now's the time. End of March. Let's get out. Let's get to doing it. Said, how about if I just start ripping it? Boy, I'll tell you what. How does anybody not think that these are such a fun fish to catch? Look at that. Isn't this water pretty here in the Ozarks? Look at that. I mean, that is just neat. All right, buddy. Okay, got another, this is, a, this is a male here, I do believe. So this one gets to feed, easy biggin. This one will get to feed Wes's little girl. Right here. She said, Daddy, don't you come home without a fish. So she's going to get some fish to eat. These white bass are coming from Bull Shoals, coming up the river, and then feeding into these different creeks. This is just one creek. If you look at a map of Bull Shoals, there, there is fingers and creeks and everything everywhere. So, but we're on one of them. Water temperature is, is, is rising. We still have some cool nights, uh, but the, it's rising. It's low 50s or whatever. Well, these whites are moving through. So what I'm doing today, I, I'm set up in, a, in, in more or less a, just a route for which these bass, these white bass are, are moving to. They're not actually spawning in the, in the area that I'm fishing. So it's not just wham, bam, every cast or whatever. It can be two or three at a time or whatever, but they're just moving. I basically would just hold my ground. I would just spot lock. I'd find a place and I'd just sit there and wait them out. And then I would change routines. I would change presentations. I'd let it sink 
and then I'd give it several jerks and go slow. Then they wanted it more up towards the, the surface where I'd keep my rod tip down and I would reel it fast and then stop it and then give it a couple of jerks and then reel it again. But you gotta change it up some. These fish, they're seeing, these people I've been seeing, about 90% of these people are throwing Bama rigs. And so I didn't wanna come out here and do the same thing everybody else. Plus I just didn't want to throw a Bama rig on there. And these jerk baits are just so much fun to catch them on. You may not catch as many, but I think the quality of fish you catch are better. Fish on. Oh, they run at the boat. I mean, they get it. I think this is another male. I don't think it's a female. But nonetheless, they just fight like the Dickens. And I've got it today. What I'm fishing is my 6'6 ACC crappie stick. And you talk about a perfect rig here. I've got it with a Revo STX, size 10. And I'm using 10 pound power braid or power pro braid. And it has been a wonderful combination. Here we go, we're gonna bring him up. Okay. There's another half pint fish right there. Come on. Boo. Boy, you get them right there. That's when they stop shaking. I wanted to bring a net and I forgot it. Because it's just for these hooks. It's not really the, I'm not scared to lift them in with my ACC. It's just, boy, these hooks, when you get nine hooks, that's when they'll get you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something. What I call milking. Now you see they're ready. They're ready for them beds, you see that? I almost put my pole in the water. You see that right there? You know they're bedding right now. Female goes in, lays the eggs, and that's how he's fertilizing them. So there's your little biology right there. You kids, that's how baby fish are made. Mama comes in, lays the eggs. Papa comes in, fertilizes the eggs. The eggs hatch, and then they eat their own. Their own. So there you go. Another one for baby girl. Okay. We're actually, we're actually getting us a little show together here. I don't know how many more I need to catch. What would you guys consider an actual webisode? How many fish do you think? Is it six, eight, 12, 15, 30? What y'all comment on that? Just how many fish does it actually take that you guys are satisfied with an episode? How many fish? Like white bass or crappie or, or whatever. You know, like if you're catfishing, would 10 four pounders be the same as, as two 40 pounders? I don't know. That's why you guys should let me know what kind of time and what, how, many, how many fish does an episode make? See, I've changed that up. I've changed that up. I quit letting it sink down and doing all the jerk. I'm just letting it kind of go along the surface and more of a steady retrieve. This feels like a little better one. How about the same size? Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah, we got the we got the males right now, so. Well, that one is in a spot. Okay. Yeah, we got the males coming right now. Hand me my little pliers back here, Wes. Would you? Right behind you. GoPro, stop recording. Hang on, hang on. Let me get this hook here. If this was my bait, what I would probably do with it I would probably take those middle hooks out. 
I don't think I need them. But still, nonetheless, that's a little male. Not little, but I mean, he's he's pound and a half. But that's fish for baby girl to eat right there. Today we were out running the G3 Gator Tough 18 Jet. And uh, like Wes always says, hey, running rivers like this is, is all you need. You know, now we wasn't running up into skinny water or going over shoals or, or whatnot, but if we need to, here in maybe, I don't know, six, seven days, those fish may be all the way back in there to where even farther back than where we were then. And this boat, you know what? It come in handy. As you can see, as you fly over it, with our drone footage right here, you can see all the, all the space that it has in it. It's 18 foot. It, it's just a, it's just an all around multi-purpose, multi-species type boat. And if you need to get into some thin water, you need to get into a, a tight place where other boats can't go, hey, the G3 Gator Tough 18 Jet, hey, that's like an ATV, baby all-terrain boat. Right here. Coming up. What do they say? I can see swivel. There you go. Another nice one right there. Coming right in there to your living room. All right, this is going to be fun to get off. And I mean just thick. Thick, thick, thick. What better thing is there to do this time of year than to catch these big old white bass? They fight. They're fun. They're aggressive. We have not been using any electronics other than what's on the console right here to give us an idea of our depth and all. That's not a monster white, but it still is a darn good one. Just fat as a butter ball, we'll let her go. Okay, boys, don't knock the white bass. Now, you talk about fun. They're one of my favorites. But people ask me all the time, say, what's your favorite species to catch? Well, it's hard to do. You know, it's like asking me, what's my favorite meal? You know, is it steak, hamburger, pizza, whatever? Well, depending on the day, <laughs> they're my favorite. Well, today, my favorite is definitely white bass. They're fun. Take the family out, the kids, the grandparents, mom and dad, brother and sister, anybody would like to catch fish and fish and catch fish often, that's the white bass. But just remember, keep what you can use, release the rest. And I appreciate you watching, especially if you've watched this long in the show, you're a true fan, there's no doubt. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, follow us on uh, YouTube, all the other social media platforms. Hey, if you like it, tell us. If you don't, tell us that too. Appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot for stopping by and spending a little time out of your day. And we'll see you out there somewhere next time right here on the G3 Sports. Thanks for watching. That my Onyx belt pack is getting a little low. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I've been, I've been trying to lose just a little bit of weight. I was tired of looking at myself in them video. <laughs> Look at that. So let me get that back up here. This is just like the belt I've been wearing. I've cinched up two notches. So I'm kind of proud of myself that I've actually lost a little bit. I got tired of looking at my big gutted self on video. Boy, you wanted really make yourself feel bad look at yourself on video especially this profile oh i couldn't stand it